on. It's on. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Now I'm sure it's safe to say that we all love video games and I'm sure it's safe to say that most of us love junk food just as much. The question that's been on my mind recently is what do you get when you mix both of them together? Well let's find out. Oh my god, don't do a Nothing quite compares to this next game that I'm going to review, Eminem's Shell Shock for the PS1. This is my jam! So the first and currently only level available to us so far is Get Out of Town, perhaps a sign of things to come. But before we get into the level, we are introduced with a very nice cutscene. Well, my yellow fellow, it's time these Eminems had a little R&R. R&R? &R? R &R? Is that a new candy? Are we being phased out? We are going on vacation! So the basic plot of this game is that this yellow guy left loads of mini M&Ms in charge of the chocolate factory and now they've got to go and resolve the issues. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise I was playing Simpsons Hit and Run! Well that's just blatant disregard for the highway code. So as you're going around, you're trying to break these crates and rescue the mini M&Ms that are inside of them. And you get a nice delightful little scream every single time. The yellow M&M has to face a difficult situation when he watches a fellow driver spin out and suddenly explode for literally no reason whatsoever. So we finished the first level and can I just say I am glad to get that level over with. That lasted way too- Oh come on! Ah, thank goodness there's a checkpoint right here so I can- I must say, however, it's very good of whoever built this road to build it right next to a mountainside so you crash directly into the rocks. How was I even supposed to see that that was there? It appeared on screen for less than a second before I even noticed that it existed and by that time my car was already wrecked. I also love how bouncy this road is. My favourite moment was when it allowed me to bounce over the ramp that I needed to hit and fall to my death. <laughs> The next time we successfully land the jump and we are thrust right into level 3, which is another driving level. This guy on a motorbike is killed by a giant cow. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That guy on a motorbike was killed by a giant cow? Life tips from Michael, guys. Don't set your standards very high when you're playing a game about M&Ms. You'll just be let down by killer cows and randomly exploding motorcyclists. And so, like something straight out of Grand Theft Auto, we jump using a ramp over the fence into the M&M's chocolate factory. And much to my delight, that's the end of the driving segment of the game. In retrospect, that part of the game isn't that bad considering what's to come. Here goes nothing. Now I'm sure I don't need to go into the long list of reasons why I believe that this game copied Crash Bandicoot as I'm sure you will see it as I'm playing the game that this game just blatantly rips off Crash Bandicoot. So this is the only thing I'll mention. This game rips off Crash Bandicoot! And it doesn't even do it well. Look here, I have invincibility. But I didn't know I have invincibility because the only thing that's telling me that I have invincibility is this small flashing light at the bottom of the screen. And the only noise it gives me to tell me that I have invincibility is the noise that I get when I pick up any other power up. I don't know what this icon means. Oh, hard hat being circled by red and green dots. That's my greatest power up, red and green dot man. <coughs> So these brown boxes that have previously contained power-ups, this one contains an M&M piece of paper? I don't know. And you've got to be careful where you're jumping, guys, because you never know when you might just land on an exploding box and die in mid-air. So because we collected all three pieces of that M&M paper, we are presented with a bonus level in which we are running away from robots. Now this bonus level confused me because it encouraged you to collect all the boxes and of course the mini M&Ms, but of course if you went to do that, you'd end up having the robots catching up to you and you'd consequently die from them. Now I don't want to draw too many comparisons, but games like Crash Bandicoot 2 had bonus levels that rewarded you. They didn't have you dying every five minutes, they just had lots and lots of apples, they had lives, they gave you loads of things that would help you when you got back to the normal level. The only thing that this bonus level is giving me is stress. My favourite part of the bonus level though is when you finish it, the yellow M&M just stands there and does nothing and looks very derpy. I also love how depth perception just doesn't exist in this game. I walk under these two enemies perfectly fine, but the third one is the one that kills me, of course. Don't you just hate when you're killed by an enemy that you didn't even know existed? Uh -oh. 
So we get another invincibility and we head out over the chocolate lake. Oops. Which kills me. Even though I had invincibility. Okay, you know what? Chocolate just kills you now. And your spin attack just lasts for so long that after I was done killing this enemy, I spun right into a TNT crate. I would just like to draw your attention to this moonwalking robot. That's all. Just look at him. Admire him. Adore him! Now, how do I get over to that island? Well, maybe you have to jump on the enemy's heads. Oops. Of course, they moved. Of course they did! So I figure out I need to jump on the moving platform to my right and make my way over to the island. Oops. Uh oh. Did that enemy just come out of thin air? It did, didn't it? It came out thin air. Yeah, it came out thin air. Great! Wonderful! So I think to answer our question earlier, what do you get when you cross junk food with video games? You get junk games. I've just wasted five minutes of your time waiting to tell that joke. I hope you're happy.